Hey guys, Brad here from Scooter Street. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the difference between two-stroke and four-stroke scooters. Now, if you're not a super mechanically-minded person, I'm gonna try and break this down in a really simple to understand way, so you start to get a really good impression of what the real differences are. Now, we're gonna break this down into a couple of categories. First is gonna be, what's the difference between two-stroke and four-stroke? What's better for performance? What's better for longevity or reliability? And why is it that it seems to be that two strokes are disappearing? Where have all the two strokes gone? Why is everything new, pretty much all four stroke? So first up, what's the difference between two stroke and four stroke? And what's a stroke for that matter? Now when talking about engine strokes, it's often easier to describe them as a cycle, one engine cycle. So a two stroke, one engine cycle involves two strokes. Easy, hey? And a four-stroke, likewise, one engine cycle, or rev, involves four strokes. Now, to make that make a bit more sense, I have two pistons here, a two-stroke piston and a four-stroke piston. Now, you're gonna notice the two-stroke piston is a bit taller, but they're both the same diameter, both 50cc pistons. Now, start off with our two-stroke piston. This is the simplest form of engine. One cycle of the engine, the piston goes up and it goes down. Two strokes, one, two. Super easy. Now I've got our four stroke piston here. Uh, our four stroke piston has four strokes per engine cycle. So one, two, three, four. Now in one cycle of an engine, you have one power stroke. Now a power stroke is when the piston comes up, the spark plug fires, air and fuel's in there, bang, explosion, that pushes the piston down. And this is where we get our power from. So with a two stroke piston, every single time the piston comes up to what we call top dead center, this is where the spark plug fires and we get our power stroke. So up, bang, power stroke. Up, bang, power stroke. So every second stroke is a power stroke. Now come to our four stroke piston. It's a little bit more complicated because we've got valves. I'm not gonna go into this. We're just gonna stick to cycles. So in our four stroke cycle, the piston goes up. We have bang, power stroke, piston comes down. It goes back up again. Then it comes down. Then it goes back up again before we get our power stroke. So we have one power stroke for every four strokes of the piston. Now, following along with that, because our two-stroke piston has twice the number of power strokes that our four-stroke piston has, it stands to reason that two strokes, generally speaking, make a fair bit more power than four strokes. Now, this leads nicely into our next category, which is performance. What's better for performance, two or four-stroke? Now, you might have already guessed from the last segment, two-stroke is generally better for performance. Now there's a couple of factors in this. One of the primary ones is because two strokes have twice the number of power strokes compared to a four stroke. Now one of the other big factors is that two strokes are a much simpler engine compared to a four stroke. Another factor is because two stroke engines are so simple, they're generally really easy to tune. Now if they're easier to tune, that means they're easier to get more power out of. Now because of this, two strokes generally tend to be very receptive to uh, performance parts. Say for instance, you put a performance exhaust on a two stroke, you're gonna get a fairly big increase in power, maybe somewhere in the range of about 40% increase in power, just from putting a performance exhaust on there and then tuning it to suit. Now coming to a four stroke, they generally tend to be far less receptive to performance tuning. Say for instance, the example I just gave with the two stroke, say you put a performance exhaust on a four stroke and you tune it for the exhaust, you'd be lucky to get a five to 10% increase in power compared to you know, well and truly four times that in the two stroke. This is absolutely not to say that you can't tune four strokes or that there's not any benefit to tuning four strokes. There definitely is. You just don't get the same level of return from the increase that you make compared to a two stroke. The other factor is because four strokes are more complicated, you've got a head, you've got a valve train. For someone who's not a mechanic or not super mechanically minded, if you're having to pay someone else to do it, they can be a lot more expensive to do big tuning upgrades too, compared to a two stroke, which is very, very simple. And uh, with some basic mechanical knowledge, you can do most of the performance tuning yourself. Now moving into our next category, which is reliability. Now, generally speaking, four strokes tend to be more reliable. There's a little bit more complexity to this, which I'll go into in a minute, but the primary reason that four strokes tend to be more reliable comes down to the way that the two engines are oiled. Now, why are engines oiled? Engines are oiled to try and reduce the friction of the internal moving parts. Friction causes heat. You're gonna get friction in pretty much any internal moving component. 
So the job of the oil is to try and keep that heat down so that you get more longevity in the engine and uh, those moving parts stay nice and free and don't bind up. Now, the way a two-stroke engine is oiled, if you've had any experience with a two-stroke, you'd know that you need to add two-stroke oil continuously as the engine runs. Now, a lot of modern two-stroke scooters have a separate oil tank. The way that the oil system works, two-stroke, generally speaking, has an oil pump. The oil is pumped into the engine with the fuel and air and is designed to be burnt inside the combustion chamber with the fuel and air, which is why with most two-strokes that are running healthily, you get a little bit of white smoke, particularly at a startup when it's running cold, it's running a little bit rich because of the choke. That white smoke is just the two-stroke engine burning, and it's supposed to be there because you're supposed to have oil burning inside a two-stroke engine. Now, a four-stroke engine is oiled quite differently. Now, a four-stroke engine essentially sits in a bath of oil. It's in what's called the sump, and there's generally an internal oil pump that recirculates that same uh, bath of oil around the engine. Generally, it will squirt it up on top of the head to keep the valve train lubricated, and that oil will then trickle down and keep the bottom end of the engine lubricated as well. Now, because a four-stroke engine is continually cycling and recycling this oil around the engine, over time, it gets dirty, and the viscosity of the oil also changes. It can get thinner, uh, but generally speaking, it will get thicker. And uh, because it's thicker, it won't be doing its job properly, it won't be lubricating in many of the small areas that it needs to get into. And so over time, you need to do an oil change uh, to keep that oil nice and fresh and to keep it doing its job. Now, because the oil is continually recirculating, it shouldn't really be burning inside the combustion chamber. Now, most four-stroke engines will get a tiny bit of oil burn or maybe an oil leak, which is why on four-strokes, uh, you have a dipstick so that you continually be checking the level to make sure there's the correct amount of oil inside the engine. But speaking generally, a four-stroke shouldn't really burn oil, certainly not in the same way that a two-stroke burns oil. Now, why have I explained this in the reliability segment? The reason that I have is because a four-stroke engine has significantly more volume of oil being supplied to all the internal components. That's gonna mean you're gonna get less wear with a four-stroke engine for the same amount of engine cycles that you will in a two-stroke engine. Now there is a balancing factor here, keeping in mind that one rev of a four-stroke engine is four strokes, and one rev of a two-stroke engine is two strokes. Now this obviously means for the same number of revs, the four-stroke piston is doing twice the number of strokes. So in some ways a four-stroke engine is doing less work, in other ways it's also doing more. Now the additional complexity that I mentioned earlier as it pertains to reliability. Before I explain that, I'm gonna to have to explain a little bit more complexity about the way that two and four stroke engines like to operate. Now, what do I mean the way that they like to operate? Two stroke engines have to get really hot to properly burn the two stroke fuel out. Now, because they're also very simple engines, uh, they like to be revved hard. They like to be operating very near to their maximum limit all the time, they're really designed to operate in this way so that they can effectively burn out that two-stroke oil and prevent carbon buildup, which is what happens when the engine's not burning hot enough. The oil, instead of burning properly and exiting the engine as gas, it turns into a thick black carbon, sort of like the stuff that you get in your oven at home if you haven't cleaned it in a while. That thick, black, sooty, burnt carbon, it gets stuck to the inside of the engine, gets stuck to the piston, gets stuck around the rings, gums them up, and it stops working properly. Now, four-stroke engines on the other side, they don't really like to be revved really hard all the time, keeping in mind that the piston is doing twice the number of strokes per cycle, which means it's going really, really fast, which means it doesn't really like to be absolutely revved out to the limit all the time. Now, the reason I mention this with four strokes, and we're talking about scooters, a lot of scooters are 50cc. A four stroke scooter, because they're quite a bit slower, uh, most of your speed zones, at least in Australia, are around the 60 to 80 kilometers per hour, a four stroke scooter has to work really hard all the time, working on almost 100% full throttle almost its entire life to be able to keep up in those sorts of speed zones. Compared to a two stroke 50, Yes, it's being revved out, often not quite as hard, but it loves to be revved out. It wants to be on its limit. It wants you to thrash it all the time. Four strokes do not like this. Now, because four strokes don't like this, four stroke 50cc scooters generally tend not to be maybe quite as reliable as a lot of bigger capacity four strokes. 
because your 50 is being pushed to the limit all the time and that eventually causes engine wear. Now compare this to a bigger four-stroke scooter, say for instance a 125, uh, 200 or even a 300cc scooter. Uh, a great example would be a Vespa GTS 300. You can expect to get really long longevity out of an engine on one of these scooters. They're not being pushed to the limit all the time. They're well and truly under their maximum capacity. You can pretty much just cruise around town on them and they're not doing tons of work. So a 300cc Vespa, we've seen some of these Piaggio engines do 60, 70,000 Ks, still really great compression, still going really well. Provided you're doing those oil changes and keeping up with your regular maintenance, a lot of these bigger capacity four-stroke scooters will run almost indefinitely. Now compare that to a two-stroke, a bigger two-stroke scooter. Probably some good examples would be Vespa PX125 or a PX150. These are bigger capacity two-stroke scooters. You're regularly going to have to change pistons in these, certainly a lot more regularly than you're going to have to change it in a similar capacity uh, four-stroke scooter. So to summarize that point, when it comes to 50cc four-stroke and two-stroke scooters, I would almost err on the side of saying the two-strokes are more reliable. And at least when they do blow, or they eventually do need a piston change, it's going to be really cheap and very easy to replace. You can probably do it yourself. Four-stroke 50cc, is gonna get probably a similar amount of longevity in terms of the number of Ks that it will do before it needs a piston change. But when it does need that piston change, it's a lot more complicated unless you can do the work yourself. And when we come to bigger capacity scooters, say for instance, one, two, five or bigger, the four stroke is all over the two stroke when it, when it comes to reliability. The four stroke is gonna outlast the two stroke every single day of the week absolutely no exception. And I will add, I say absolutely no exception, but there is one exception. If you don't keep up with your regular maintenance on a four stroke, mainly changing the oil and the oil filter, it won't outlast a two stroke. So you've got to keep up with your maintenance on your four strokes. Now, when it comes to a lot of the modern scooters, kind of sounds like you're saying, Brad, that two strokes are, you know, really powerful and they're super simple and you get heaps of performance benefits with them and they're really easy to work on. Why are they disappearing? The reason for that comes down to emissions, unfortunately. Because two strokes are continuously burning oil all the time, over the same uh, lifespan of the engine, the two strokes going to go through a lot more oil than the four stroke is, even with the oil changes in your four stroke. And because the two stroke is burning the oil, it's putting that oil out in the atmosphere and that kills the polar bears or something like that, which means that two strokes unfortunately are becoming a bit of a dying breed. A lot of engine emissions control and legislation comes through what they call European emission standards. You might have seen this referred to before as Euro 2, Euro 3, 4 and 5. Now over time the European emissions, the European emission standards are getting more and more strict and with the introduction of Euro 5 it's made it virtually impossible for the scooter and engine manufacturers to be able to make a two-stroke engine that will adhere to these very, very strict emissions controls. Now, if you've seen or had any experience with some of the Euro 4 uh, two-strokes, you would know that they had to add a significant amount of complexity to the system, um, little air solenoids, special systems that advanced and retarded the timing, just to try and get that little bit more, a little bit less emissions from the back of the exhaust to try and keep up with those uh, stricter and stricter emission standards. Now when we come to Euro 5, Euro 5 just killed the two-stroke, unfortunately. This is the reason that you're seeing pretty much all new 50cc scooters and all scooters in general are pretty much all four-stroke. And this is pretty much gonna be the way that it is until electric scooters become a bigger thing, which they're not really at the moment. So for at least a while, we're gonna be stuck with four-stroke scooters. Now it might sound like I'm hating on the four-strokes a little bit here, I'm really not. Four strokes are great and you can get some significant performance increases from them. You just need to know what you're doing and do a little bit more work. Now another factor here, because the manufacturers are being forced to only use four strokes, it means that they're doing a little bit more work than they previously had been to get a bit more power out of them. This means that we're getting more and more advanced four stroke scooters. Uh, we're getting more advanced injection systems, we're getting more valves. Um, which allow more airflow and more fuel, equals more power. The four strokes are coming a long way from what they were, say for instance, 10 years ago. Now, this trend is only gonna continue. The four strokes are gonna keep getting better and better and better. 
Now, you'd know this if you drive a car that was 40 years old and you drive a car that you drive off the lot yesterday, there's a really big difference in terms of the amount of power you can get out of the capacity. Now, the same is gonna be true of scooters. A lot of that higher end uh, four stroke engine technology is gonna to start to bleed down in the scooters. So because necessity is the mother of all invention, as it's said, the four strokes are only gonna get better. We're gonna just be seeing more and more powerful four strokes. And likewise, the performance manufacturers, because they don't have an option either, they're in the same position as the bike and engine manufacturers, Molossi and Polini and some of the other manufacturers are just coming out with more and more performance parts for the four strokes. And it's just going to get easier and easier over time to pull a bit more power out of your four stroke scooter. So boiling it down to the primary subject of today's video, what's better, two or four stroke? When it comes purely to performance, what's gonna make the most power and what's gonna be the most tunable, it's gonna be two stroke every day. When it comes down to reliability, for the most part, it's gonna be four stroke. My personal feelings on it, having ridden just about every scooter you could possibly imagine, old, new, Vespers from the 60s, brand new Vespers, everything in between. For a 50, it's always gonna be a two stroke for me, at least for the time being anyway. I like to do performance tuning, I like to tinker, I like to fiddle. Two strokes are fantastic for that. Now, if I was buying something bigger than a 50, it's gonna be a four stroke every single day. My bike's a four stroke, it's only a 250. Two strokes do require more work, even though you can do more to them. Four strokes are just easy. Turn the key, start it up, do an oil change every now and again, you're right to go. I don't think that it's really a matter of what's better. Primarily, it comes down to preference. What do you like? In some instances, the two stroke's gonna be better. In other instances, the four stroke's gonna be better. But looking forward, we're all gonna be stuck with four strokes soon. So my advice would be if you can pick up a really good two stroke, buy it because they are a dying breed. They are disappearing from the scene and they're only gonna get older and older. So if you want a two stroke, you better grab one quick smart because they're gonna disappear. Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully there was some useful information in there for you. Now we're constantly getting asked for more four stroke content and I promise you it is coming. Please just be patient. We're getting there. I know you guys are desperate to learn and uh, it is coming. But um, as always, if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments. We endeavor to answer every single question. We appreciate your support. If you wanna see more videos like this, you wanna see more of that four stroke content that's coming, please uh, like and subscribe to our channel.